All right, what's going on, guys? Um, just to get this out of the way, uh, I really don't feel the best. Uh, I actually, when I was streaming uh, Monday, I was actually really kind of achy. And when I got off that night, I was like, man, I don't really feel it too good. Next day, which was yesterday, or Tuesday, I mean, didn't feel the best either. Got a little bit, a little bit worse. And then today, I actually just went in and got a COVID test just because with school and work, you know, I'm not trying to skip out. I just want to do things the right way. And so um, probably a solid possibility that I have it, but we're going to be okay. Um, I have got a game for you guys in the Akazuki. And uh, my commander build is going to be at the end. So obviously if you want to skip towards that, I think the game's like right at 15 minutes. And then, yeah, it'll be, if you want to skip to that, it's the last five minutes. You can come back, whatever. Um, so yeah, the Akazuki. Do I think this ship is worth it? Man, that is a tough... That is a tough question to ask. Because I definitely think it's worth it. But if you saw how I reacted to the tier 4, 5, and 6, which are ultimately alternative Japanese torpedo boats. They're absolutely terrible. I hate them so much. Not only, I mean, they're just my worst, you know, they're my kryptonite, you know. I, I just get bored playing the torpedo boats. Uh, I had my, I have my fill. I use torpedoes anyways. I think Z, Fletcher, Lightning are great. I love using torpedoes, but I don't like using ships that just use torpedoes, you know. So I just, I get so bored with that, and I don't like being able to not contest caps and kill other DDs. So it was just like the worst of the worst for me, obviously. So it might be better for you guys. I know a lot of you are probably better than me at them and just have a little bit more patience. But uh, this is going to be a really nice showcase uh, showing what, what this ship can do offensively because this is an absolute, it's not a one-trick pony. Uh, and I'll get to that a little bit later, but you are a gunboat. You have, in my opinion, you have to spec out as much as possible into guns, um, and it is outrageous fun. I think in the right circumstances, if you're playing correctly and you're not caught off guard, this is probably you know straight up the best gunboat that we have right now it's basically a Fletcher with three more guns it's absolutely ridiculous I don't know why I'm aiming way too low on that Terpitz's uh, side there oh man I apologize um, so yeah biggest thing that I'm going to mention about the commander I'm running Togo for the extra 2% chance of fire I know some of you guys are going to be rolling in your grave Karita with Twitch and Track is my recommended competitive build. Definitely for sure, um, Twist and Track is just too valuable. Um, but this is a little bit more fun. Uh, I actually only played this a couple times using it, and I was like, I wonder what we can do with an extra 2% chance of fire. My thing with Karita is I would light a fire, and it'd be great. And honestly, it was just bad RNG at that point. The person would burn a damage con, like a bad play, and then I would struggle to actually get the uh, the perma fire as well so i was like you know what i'm gonna make sure these dang things light so we're specking out pretty much all offense here um notice that i'm open water gunboating too this thing can be pretty cheeky I don't, you only have two smoke screens you do have a lot of health though with bay and with bay and sims i'm rocking at 5.3 detection which is very good for a gunboat of this of this size and of this you know having that much power in your guns 5.3 is amazing and almost 23,000 health that's a lot so you can you can play it a little a little open you know don't be scared to you know shoot your guns get a fire and then drop spot I mean all that damage that you're going to need to be done over time because you don't have torps you know you're going to need to be spreading out your damage consistently throughout games and uh, definitely uh, Togo with a 7% chance of fire it makes those a little bit easier for sure and uh, actually later on that Odin that just uh, went out to the left there is actually going to come back and we're going to do something really really terrible to him at the end and I would like to think that that was because of the extra fire chance just helping out just a little bit more helping me uh, secure the deal um, notice he's in range. The range is actually pretty good on this thing. I think if it was any further, it would be, you know, obviously you can spec out to make it further range, but 
I think it's pretty fun. You can, with the flag and with Togo, you can actually get, I think, up to 12 almost. And uh, we get a fire there as well. We're just kind of pissing this guy off, but I know he doesn't have a damage con, so any kind of damage that I can tweak out right now, I'm going to. I have 20,000 health. I'm very far away. You know, I might as well. With this rate of fire, like, something is going to hit. And this is where I think I think this is like the first time that I noticed that the game was actually going pretty south. And I definitely want to focus on the game for sure, but obviously like I made such a big deal about the grind for this thing. I want to show you guys like what it can do. Um the game is not looking very good. Um it might not look terrible right now because we have control of this cap. Their spawn over here is really struggling. But that GK that I just aimed at is going to be a really big problem. And he's one of those ships that is, I kept looking back at. I was like, man, he's still alive. And I was like, I looked back again. I'm like, man, he's still alive. And I just couldn't focus him. And uh, you see our other spawn over there. Uh, if you just keep watching over there, they're going to start to struggle really, really hard. Oh, man, sorry. I got to take a sip of... <sighs> got to take a sip of Gatorade. Got to remember to breathe. Man, it sucks. Stay hydrated if you're getting sick, for sure. <clears throat> Sorry. Um, but yeah, that's enough about the game so far. Uh, I think the biggest thing with this thing being not, not a one-trick pony, going back to what I was saying earlier, was yes, it only has four torpedoes, but it has, as you can see, the torpedo reload booster. So you can get a full set of eight out pretty pretty quickly. And I think the best thing about it is people, much like the reload booster on a Jean Bart, you never know when that person's going to pop it. So, you know, if he shoots or whatever, and you start to get broadside or whatever, and it's like, oh, I'm safe. You have no idea if he's popping your, popping that reload booster and whatnot. So it can actually be pretty cheeky, and it's, it's going to work out now if you ever hear. GK obviously burns one fire. Do not do. Uh, and the reason why this fire build, I think, is so effective is because there are so so many players and especially battleships that still do that you know it's like they just they have a hundred thousand health but they burn one fire because it's ticking like 300 or so so obviously i'm worried about the gk and a six kilometer hydro so i'm already getting out of the way I'm gonna turn my turrets the other way i don't want to be driving into that other gk as well we use our torpedo reload booster getting out of the way of this our friendly guy here i'm just trying not to get shot by a secondary GK has no damage con, and we sink him with one torpedo hit. Now, that is only like, what was that, 13,000 damage? Not a lot, but the flooding, as you see, we're at 100,000 damage right now. The flooding, especially with no damage con up, is going to absolutely ruin that guy's health. And right now, what I'm thinking to myself is like, okay, like he's flooding. I want to kill him, but I also don't want to get focused too hard because we're basically surrounded here. Uh, and it's just getting worse. Again, that's when I looked at that GK, and I was like, man, that GK is still alive. And he was really putting everyone in the crossfire there because they pushed too hard. So I couldn't make up my mind what I wanted to do here. I wanted to get a safe enough distance away that the GK um, wouldn't have his secondaries. And then I feel like I could have played it a little bit more aggressive. You know, who knows? But immediately we get a fire there. I would like to say that that's thanks to the extra fire chance that I built. Um, and probably just some good RNG, you know, you never know. But he's stuck with a full fire, so he's going to burn as well. At this point in time, I was like, dude, this GK has got to die. I mean, he's taken... Not only has he taken a lot of time away from us, but he's just... He's stalling all of those ships trying to get in the way and targeting the Odin so like we're essentially not doing much here and the spawn away from us is really starting to flood in so it's like okay we got to get something done here now this was a decision that I was very very cautious about making the AP on this ship is absolutely no joke you definitely should use it at almost all broadsides at honestly any ranges don't don't be afraid to shoot it but if someone is giving broadside within 10 kilometers absolutely use the AP Light of fire, you can get it easier with the seven percent. Once you get that fire, go ahead and start hammering with the AP. You know, you're getting one, two, three thousand damage. Three thousand is a little high, but you know what I'm saying. Every two seconds, that that builds up really quick. And, and then you also have a fire, maybe two ticking on them as well. 
that is where this ship really shines. Um, it's really just in its ammo switchability and the versatility of its AP along with the HE. So you have to keep mixing it up and start stacking some damage on targets. And that's where you're really going to see the DPM fly on this thing. And then we, we you know, I, I told you guys I was bad at torps. <laughs> I don't know how we hit that one. Um, so yeah, unfortunately, I was terrified. I had I had not fought a uh, Martell yet, so I didn't know how my guns were going to do against him. Did pretty well, to be honest, but um, without those torp hits, that would have been very rough. And yeah, I, I think... Ultimately, I gave him a little bit too much um, too much leeway because he was focused on other targets, so I could have played that a little bit different. But again, I mean, I just maxed out this ship, so it's very, it's still very new to me, and uh, I really don't know what it's capable of. I do know for sure that it does take damage pretty quickly. Uh, you do have a lot of HP, but you're a pretty big target, and I feel like more than ever, uh, you're just a ship that takes damage. I mean, you can... You get shot by something that's like, oh, it's, it was 3 or 4K. I was like, and you're just like, what the heck? That was 3 or 4K. And it's like, what in the world just happened? Anyways, here. Odin, this is the part that I was going to get up to. Um, once this guy turns in broadside, your HE alpha um, against these kind of targets is going to take an absolute year to take them down. He's not showing broadside either. So my ability to get like really consistent damage against this guy is not going to be from my guns. Obviously it's there, but I'm gonna to have to stack fires as well. Immediately get two fires, and he's also running firefighter, which only gets him three firefighters or three fire slots. So I have to aim for middle, I aim for the front, and you see there I'm aiming for the back. I wanna get this guy dead as quick as possible. And you know he has two, so he's probably dead now, but I need to get this guy dead right now. So the extra fire chance really helps you kind of squeak out those extra fires. Get the third one on his back there, and uh, at this point in time, he's dead. I don't have to worry about him. Uh, I'm actually loving this build, to be honest. I didn't think I would be using a base commander, because Togo is basically the guy that they give you um, that can work with cruisers, and that can also work with uh, DDs. Uh, I, I, was, I was full bent on Karita, and to be honest, um, I'm glad that I got Karita up to like 11 or so. I definitely think it's he's a very good commander as well, but I'm also, this was a guy that I had just had a ton of um, commendations for, and I leveled him up to Legendary 2 without investing anything in there as well. So I was like, you know what, I can give this guy a shot, and I think he works out pretty well. Uh, this kind of, in my opinion, is like the uh, Arleigh Burke and um, the Halsey conundrum for the USDDs. Arleigh Burke gives you the extra fire chance, but... Um, Halsey gives you the twist and track. Uh, I think twist and track is definitely the best choice. But with Halsey, or I mean with Burke, you can get that extra fire chance and squeak out um, some more damage on the targets and kill them a little bit faster. This is where I'm going to say that the the steering helped me out a little bit, and obviously this was probably aided by the GK as well. For some reason, this guy just could not hit me. Uh, again, you see me switching to the high explosive, or not the high explosive, man, I'm, I'm off of it right now. <laughs> uh, I see that he burned the damage con after the first one uh, again. So while his damage con is going, I'm not going to light fire, so I'm going to switch to AP. And we were getting very good results there. And yeah, at this point, the secondaries are just kind of shooting all around me. I'm in real no danger unless he smacks me. I think he shoots AP this entire time. And obviously, guys, this game is over, but you guys want a gunboat to have some fun with. This ship is definitely one of my favorites. Definitely one of my favorites um, DDs. I love the Fletcher, but Fletcher always left me with that, man, like, I wish I could get the reload faster, you know? So this kind of gives you that kind of, like, overpowering... I don't know, gunboat feel. If you're looking for that, this is absolutely the ship for you. You're going to have to get used to the handling. It is definitely worse than any other DD, Tashkent. It is it is worse. You're just going to have to play around it. And right here, uh, hitting over 240k with the AP and a fire going. I'm telling you guys, once you get, once you get fires going, once you get these AP broadsides, the damage is just absolutely insane. And then another fire as well. 
And honestly, what looked, uh, walking you back through this is probably just really good RNG. But the came ins, I stopped firing on him because I thought he was dead, but he actually had build rebuild. Anyways, guys, I love this DD. I think it's worth it. The grind is really rough. Um, unfortunately, our team just didn't do enough there, but this is a nice showcase of its offensive power. Um, if you want to get it, go for it. My commander build is going to be next for the next five minutes, so enjoy that if you haven't already seen it. And, uh, and yeah, I'm going to let Chili next recording talk to you guys. Peace. All right. Now that you guys have seen what just happened, obviously my build is going to be pretty standard up until the commander, I feel like. So aiming mod, always. Propulsion is almost an always for me. Concealment expert, almost an always. And then definitely the main battery reload for sure. The turret reverse is still pretty good. So. I guess the biggest thing to look at is your best choices, in my opinion, between commanders are going to be Karita and I guess Togo. I don't know. I mean, he's definitely been putting out some damage and some good games for me. Um, the competitive choice, I think for sure, is easily Karita. Having the option of twist and track is pretty, you know, in terms of winning games, uh, that is that is the choice that I would pick. So, what I look for Togo here, obviously running Bay and Sims. Almost always for my destroyers. Uh, Burn it down gives you plus two percent chance of fire, which might not seem like a lot, but it can be a lot, especially when you're shooting every 2.6 seconds with eight shells. So it can really surprise you, in my opinion. Obviously, you get look at me now as well. Crisscross and any of these, you know, you don't need these. Don't don't go for them. Go for the concealment. And these two are kind of trash, but this one works because what are you? You're pretty slow. Obviously my Togo isn't leveled up super high, but you are slow, so getting a speed boost, speed boost there is nice for sure. And then also, especially for Togo, you get better options at your, your fourth slot here. You got smoke on the water, which you can use. You have more range for your guns, your gunboat, you know, you can use that for sure. Or you can use a rudder shift. I went with the rudder shift, obviously it's a very sluggish kind of ship. And then you also get some interesting things here. Definitely would not recommend will to rebuild. <laughs> I just don't. <laughs> uh, fully packed to give you some options to uh, string together some some smoke screens, especially with uh, if you get in range of your your allies. But I don't like depending on an. I really just don't. I don't know. Things like those are just aren't consistent enough for me. So, and I really I really don't think you need more than two smoke screens. This thing can open water gunboat pretty well, and uh, you can get a lot of damage done and fire set, and then go dark, and you're fine. Uh, obviously, I think the best choice here is Unstoppable, which is what you get on Karita as well. I'm going to go over Karita as well. Where you at? There we are. Didn't mean to select him. So obviously, I was kind of messing around with some builds as well. Gurin's okay. Uh, I definitely think I would put on Bay. Uh, again, I was just trying him out earlier. Our observant range is great. I love this skill, but again, this ship is already really... It's a long DD. It, it can definitely struggle in some tight corners, especially like trying to dodge from torpedoes. The rudder shift time kind of makes it, I don't know. Uh, I Honestly, in the game that I just had, I was noticing that I was dodging a lot more shots and it might be because I wasn't running this. You know, I was turning a little bit quicker. Minus 8% chance on the reload of the guns really isn't that, that much when you're talking about this low of a reload. So again, we can match the concealment so not losing anything linger. Obviously, Twist and Track is going to be your big draw to Karita. I think this is the best competitive choice. And then, like I was saying for Togo, you get better options on Togo. I mean, Smoke on the Water is fine, but it's just kind of like a, yeah, sure, I'll use it. And then Cloudy Days is just kind of a, kind of a meh. So, obviously unstoppable. I honestly haven't tried Evil Sparks. Um, it just looks too bad, in my opinion. I've heard a lot of opinions that it is bad. And honestly, I don't want to try it out myself. Uh, obviously, continuing with the game that we just had, I think you're just fine keeping the guns the way they are. Uh, you have great alpha um, with the amount of fire that you can hold out. And then if you're shooting superstructure anyways, you're going to get damage. Your AP is very good as well. So I just think you lose way too much offense against like enemy destroyers, which is going to be your biggest problem with this thing. Like as, as soon as you can kill the DDs on the enemy team, 
it's open season. You're good to go. So I just, I don't know. It's not, the, the drop off to the damage is just way, way too much. It should be maybe 20% in my opinion. But yeah, it's going to be a commanding build, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I'm actually recording this before I record <laughs> the first part. So this is kind of awkward. But guys, I love you so much. Y'all take it easy. Uh, thank you guys so much for sticking with me here. Uh, yeah, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.